through all these differences, it's hard for me to think about how a Mormon can be a Christian. I mean, just because they proclaim to be Christians doesn't mean that they are Christians. You could say that about the Christians in Corinth. And the also, very f okay. I, I just want to tell this guy, clearly, from what we've just talked about, we're more Christian than you, but we're not going to gatekeep you on this. You can still call yourself a Christian, even oh. though we're the actual Church of Jesus Christ <laughs> of Latter-day Saints. Oh, You can still call yourself a Christian because at least you're trying. I get that you're kind of misled in what you're doing, but at least you are trying. You're trying to make videos and trying to figure it out and get to where you want to be. Um, I think you're probably trying to do what you think is right. But I'd invite you to pray and ask God if there is more truth in what we have shared with you today and see what he has to say to you. Listen for God's response. You know, that was beautiful and Christ-like. Also, you can hate me. I'm going to say that. I got in trouble because I said this once online. The way they describe God in the Athanasian Creed is the Gaston song. Like, yeah. it's literally just, <laughs> oh my no gosh. one's strong like our God, no one runs like our God, no one. It's like, you have not actually told me anything. You've just used hype terms. What's going to happen to this guy when he finds out that Elohim is plural? How is this guy's beliefs not satanic? I'm sorry, I'm just going to say... Welcome back to Midnight Strike Through Mormons, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Cardinalis, and today I'm joined in the studio by Quaku L and Brad Whitbeck, as well as, back by popular demand, William the Thrillium Larkins. Yeah. And today we're going to be doing kind of a fun little debunking here. I have been recommended all kinds of interesting content via the YouTube algorithms now. The latest being this guy who apparently I found out is actually a youth pastor after having looked Wait, this up. Pull him back up. Uh, pull him back up. Yeah. He made a video called Six S Major Differences. Switch to Quaku. Switch to Quaku. Okay. Yeah. Quaku. There's Quaku. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> well, Look one at, of us has to change. Look at their hats. <laughs> yeah. Who wore it better, ladies and me, gentlemen? Me. Who wore it better? <laughs> you know? The priest well, it always looks better than this nonsense. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, look at that. You guys do have an oh my gosh, up to the font in your hat. Yeah. Well, the LA Dodger hat and both the both green uh long sleeve little sweaters. Oh uh, my goodness gracious. Huh. Wow. You look guys are literally just a image of each other. Okay. But I wear my hat up high like the TikTok douchebags, and he's wearing his the way it's supposed to be worn. Like a human. Like a real human. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, this guy has made another kind of um, what I consider recycled or run of the mill, but you guys can see what you think. Uh, argument against the church saying six major differences between Christians and Mormons. Ooh. So I'm excited. You're I'm, already, I'm already upset because I know what he's going to say because they always say the same things. Yes. And I'm annoyed that in 2022, this is where they think the battle is. And they think that it's new. <laughs> Like, yeah. how, are, how are you bringing souls to Christ by doing this? I am also very amazed where it's just like, wow, in the battle, like, we are literally in the trenches of World War One spiritually. As there's massive abortions happening over here, massive addiction, depression, nihilism, all this other heinous, horrible crap going on on the other side, outside in the trenches. These guys are nitpicking whether or not the uniforms on their buddies are like tucked in or not. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, okay, yeah. well, let's see what he has to say. Let's see if it's just recycled garbage. Honestly, the best part about chemo brain is I've already forgotten what arguments he made. Yeah. I just remember that I copy and pasted the URL and my little list of things to react to later. So it's pretty much just as fresh in my mind as it is in yours. Sick. So let's, uh, let's see what homeboy here has to say. All right. Every conversation I have with a Mormon always ends up in the same place where they're saying, wait, no, I'm a Christian too. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the Church of Jesus Christ, Christ of Latter-day Latter Saints. Saints. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, here we go. I'm just stopping so he can't say that this isn't transformative content. Here we go. But are Mormons Christians? We're going to take a look at the six major differences between Mormonism and Christianity. We're going to be looking at both doctrines and comparing the similarities and the differences. And here's a little spoiler alert. There's a little bit more contradictions than there are similarities. Make sure to stick around for the video because they kind of get crazier and crazier. So, uh, pause okay. for just a second. Yeah, yeah. 
like more like, contradictions than similarities. <laughs> okay, Protestants. Yeah. Like <laughs> of all the denominations you have, you're gonna say, "Oh, Mormons are so different." Get over yourself. Like, yeah. It's- He's acting like we're like Paul You Feast barely and, agree like, on the Nicene Creed with some of these people. Dude, at, you literally, you want to just show, like, they, Sorry, Will. He's, I, I have a feeling he's going to make a bunch of Sola Scriptura arguments and, you know, so on and so forth. But uh, throw, it, you want to throw a hand grenade into an evangelical, uh, um, an evangelical conference? Just say, is dancing supported by the Bible? And you'll have, oh, they'll just go crazy. Then say, hey, what do you guys think about the chosen. And then, <laughs> you know what I'm no, okay. Like, so first, this is what they always do, and I can't stand it because they're always like Christianity versus Mormonism, and they have the Bible versus the Book of Mormon. We, we use the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We believe in the Bible. Like, <laughs> like it's not like we replaced gospel, it. Look on like the Gospel Doctrine app, like the library app. It's like one of the main things in yeah. there. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, Bible. If you They're want a free the Bible, by the way, any Christian who watches this, you can get a free app from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints with a Bible in it. I'm oh, disappointed. Oh. Like, this guy is apparently a pastor in town that I found out when I just Googled his name, right? Oh, yeah? And we were conversing in the in the, in the the chat, and I said, look, dude, bro, look, we can converse here. You can come on my radio show. I'll, I'll buy you a steak dinner afterwards. We'll be friends. You're cool. You're safe. You know what I'm saying? So on and so forth. And he didn't respond to it. He's like, well, what parts do you think I got wrong? I was like, like 17. Like these recycled ones. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So anyway, well, keep I, going. And, and, and also, I mean, you know what? Let, let's just let him. Let you just want to let, let him say it? Let okay, him let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so here we go. Let's see here. Let's see here. He just reminds me of the guys from my hometown, uh-huh. like the evangelical guys from my hometown that- bullied mormons all the time and luckily we always beat them in like homecoming and prom because we were cooler yeah but just like still like i just reminds me of like there the, is an arrogant air that they have as though we represent christianity and it's like you mean that you guys can't agree on anything like you literally cannot also, agree on a single our thing. church is doing all your heavy lifting yeah. like we like literally all the heavy lifting we're doing it uh-huh. you guys have not stood up for yourself we are standing up for all christians for everything and then lastly, to say we're not Christian, before The Chosen, the second most popular Bible videos in the world came from the LDS church so much where other churches use and them all the time. Who who was the main character in that? A Mormon. In fact. And and, and who who were they representing? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, wait. Yeah. yeah. What? Our church. We did it. You guys didn't do it because half the church movies you guys make suck. So we finally made our Jesus movie, and and every Christian was like, "Wow, this is good." Yeah, I well, know. What, what's <laughs> also really funny is I'll say like, "Okay, cool. We just interview the pastors over here that are like a little bit more of the Pentecostal bent, right?" They were cool. Yeah, they they were cool guys. But what's crazy is like the Baptists over at Masters University want nothing to do with them. And say that they're like one foot out the door heretics, right? Hey, no. And then you go down the down the aisle and, you know, the Assembly of God people are saying, no, both of those ones are wrong. They should be wearing veils over their heads. You know what I'm saying? No, and yeah, then you yeah. walk down they, the street and then there's like these conservative Christians where they're like, okay, oh, you wh- better be wearing a cardigan. Where in the Bible, immodest. Carden, where in the Bible would it imply that we're supposed to have like one faith, one Lord and one baptism? Show me. <laughs> That's not in there anywhere. Also, you know they have a term for like so by the way, they always say that look, 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 we just we disagree on non salvific things. You know when they stop saying that? As soon as the Mormon leaves the room. Because uh-huh. they literally <laughs> argue all day long, but when we come to like, wait, 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 but we all we're all brothers, we all agree. No, you don't. Because you know what? This is what I've noticed about... I know we haven't let the guy speak yet. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I've noticed this because I've been watching the evangelical YouTube the past couple of years. I've been I've been watching you. All right? <laughs> Here's what I figured out. <laughs> yeah. You, got, you guys dunk on each other. Like, evangelical media is no better than TMZ. Because every time you guys have someone who actually does a good job and, like, gets recognized and people are like, wow, this is cool, you guys cancel them. Lauren Daigle was freaking awesome with that music, and then she started getting canceled by all the little keyboard warrior 
pastors on YouTube that were dude. like, is she actually Christian? She went on Ellen, a lesbian's dude. talk show, and didn't answer the no, hard look, question hey, the way we wanted her to. One of the core teachings of Jesus Christ is to question whether other people were really Christians. Yeah, because they said because of one thing they said at the mo- on the largest talk show in world history, mm-hmm. led by a lesbian about homosexuality. Jesus literally told us to make men an offender for a word. That's yeah. what he said to do, right? And, and, and That's Brad, what the Bible but, said. Well, Brad, do you hear what Lord Daigle said when Ellen asked her if homosexuality was sin? What? She said to read the Bible and figure it out. <laughs> Dude, you think look at God this. wants you to read it? You know what's crazy is now that I get uh, recommended all of this evangelical content, like, no joke. Look at this. I just Googled right now. I can't remember what the video was, so I, I, I just threw it up right here. But, oh my gosh, look at this. I'm going to put it on the screen so you guys can uh, have a chance to see it right here. And, but, and while you're moving that, the other, Maverick City, they canceled. Best Christian really? rock music, best Christian gospel music I've ever heard in my why, life. Why did they get canceled? Oh, because Chandler Moore uh, uh, made a joke about having sex with his wife on his wedding. Uh, and then Dante, what? whatever, said he liked Lil Nas X when they want to, gr- like, literally, like, the stupidest things. Oh, The Chosen. They're canceling The Chosen now because that one pastor, who, the one who talks like rat about, why they tell you about Christianity? Who's that guy? Oh, what's that? He made what? Ratchet Radio. Yeah. Ratchet Radio. He was like, the Chosen has quoted the Book of Mormon in one of their episodes, and they didn't. It didn't. It didn't, but they all jumped on the cancel train because I'm telling you, modern evangelicals just literally sit around and cancel each other because the ones with talent actually put themselves out there because they want to spread the message of God, but the ones who just react because they have nothing to do because they're lazy, untalented, angry hacks sitting behind a screen just cancel each other all day long. These guys are literally TMZ, and there's a reason why they refer to each other as evangelifish. That's a term they use. I'm not kidding. They call each other evangelifish if they're not evangelical enough. Like, literally, I, I can't even watch. That one freaking who's that big uh, Christian YouTuber guy who used to be really cool, but he's kind of a jerk now. Um, mm, geez, I don't know. Oh, uh, I don't know. He, was, uh, we'll do a reaction to him. He's okay, just, cool. Yeah, I just like mm-hmm. uh, Stephen Furtick's not Christian because his son made a rap song. Shut up! Like, yeah, just stop. yeah. So, like, look yeah. at this right here. Look at this right here. I, I I remember that this one came across my feed, and I thought, how how is this Christian? Uh-huh. Number two, there's the wretched radio guy. These evangelical books should never have been written. Look, look at the <laughs> thumbnail. It's literally him saying these books stink and it's like uh, like like seven of the past eight or six of the past seven most popular books in evangelical Christianity. And that's the problem with all of these arguments. Like they always come at Mormonism as though they represent Christianity as a cohesive whole. Yeah. Never realizing that they are the most fragmented disagreeing dysfunctional family I've ever seen in my life that cannot agree on a single thing they can't agree on baptism Mm -hmm. is it by immersion or is it symbolic or is it wholly unnecessary throw that little philosophical hand grenade into uh, one of their get togethers and watch them all argue about dancing baptism but the only thing they agree on is Catholics 90% wrong Mormons (laughs) 99.99999% wrong it's like a doctrine of exclusion pure exclusion And, and you know what I feel like when i look at the thumbnail that you just shared with us that that to me that's what it looks like to it's go chasing. forth well it, it's what it looks like to go forth preaching the gospel to all nations and you know and fulfilling the commission i can't believe they wrote Christ. these books these books stink uh-huh yeah, yeah. And like, <laughs> that's how you baptize all nations don't like don't all like the christian churches do they believe they believe in the ten commandments right yes well mm-hmm. yes yeah yeah, yeah. And it's like one. Well, not all of them. There are some who would say <laughs> that was fulfilled. We don't need to do it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, it's like, well, they, do be they believe in love their enemies like as thyself? And it's well, like, well, if you truly love your enemy, you're gonna try to cancel them and make their life terrible yeah, like, because they said one thing you don't it, like. It, okay, like, well, let's let's let the guy poor talk. En- oh yeah, yeah he's yeah, only yeah. talked twenty six seconds, and we've already like lambasted. Yeah, it, but right? you're telling you, I'm telling you, he, he seems does not lot. love us. He I tell you that much. He's that? not loving us as he's loving himself. Uh, and that's he is actually why he's definitely attacking us. That, that's you know what? I don't think the Hello Saints guy like loves us, loves us, but I think he's trying to. 
Maybe he does. And yeah, I, 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 I would think, love to talk to him. Yeah, I think you. he's making a noble effort, and I think he's doing his best to swallow his pride and and, and to try and be Christ-like about it. I don't think he's one hundred percent succeeding because humans we can't succeed in any of our most <laughs> noble endeavors, you know, without like yeah. we would become gods if we were that good, and, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I do notice there is a difference in attitude, and I think that's also why it's rewarded more on YouTube. But anyway, let's keep going. It, let's let the guy talk. Say what you gotta say, Will. Say it. And like, I think, yeah, he's trying. But this guy, you can tell, is not trying at all. He's not trying. Yeah, he none. hates us. He hates us. You can and see in that's, his eyes. Yeah, you can totally fo- see in his eyes. He hates us. But he priest, does. And he's not following the Ten Commandments. He does seem cool, though. He, like, well, he, we don't want to. He dresses there. awesome. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable sitting here in judgment of saying whether or not uh, yeah, he dresses pretty what, well, Carden. What he yeah. does dress pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna say. Whether or not he actually has true Christian love in his heart or something, because only God can judge He's that. But I can say, the Ten Commandments. I've seen those eyes. I've seen those eyes, you and those are the eyes of people that hate us. Usually, all right. You don't make a YouTube Shut channel. up, Will, and let us keep going. Okay. <laughs> this guy's a just, piece just, of. No, oh. just, no, come on, Will. We're just Will, kidding. Come on, chill. <laughs> so here we go. Let's let this guy talk and see what he's got to say. Here we are calling other people mean and unloving as we're saying like he doesn't. You know, we're such hypocrites. Yeah, that's. But right. anyway, so here we go. Oh, whoops. Wait, whoa, hold on a second. We got to bring that one back. Way to silence him. Yeah, I silence him. I apologize. <laughs> First difference comes from the question, who is God? Seems like a pretty straightforward question, right? Well, the views are kind of different. In Christianity, we believe that God is the personal, eternal, infinite creator of the universe. There there he goes again in Christianity. That's exactly represents- what the Bible says, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Let's Do- not relying on any extra biblical <laughs> source material for that definition that he just laid out right there. Yeah. So you guys tell me when to pause when you guys think it's time to pause. Okay, so here okay. we go. He's all knowing, all powerful, everywhere at once, and he's the only God that there is. He exists eternally as a trinity God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One God, three. Okay. Once again, everything he is saying is not found in the Bible. Also, what? The Trinity? Yeah. This is all (laughs) stuff that they had to have councils to put together. What they agreed on for what the Trinity Wait, was going to be. Wait, but Pastor do. James White, the guy that doesn't agree with John MacArthur, who doesn't agree with that <laughs> Bozak guy, who all hate Joel Olstein, and no Catholics are going to hell, those Christians that are all unified in thought, James White, their leader, not leader, says the Trinity is in between the lines. You got to read between the lines. What's his oh, quote? Oh, boy. What's his quote again? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The, it's it's in be, it's in between the chapters, something like that. Yeah, he said like, which is very convenient. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. is that? No, but what's his something quote? tells me that they would not have had to have the Nicene Creed later clarified by the Athanasian Creed if it was really there. Yeah, if also, you could see can, it so easily. I, like, uh, we're, we're gonna break this down real quick. Okay, so first, you'll notice we describe God with qualities that you can actually see in your mind's eye. Because mm-hmm. to have a relationship with something, you need to have some sort of personalized connection. They use hype words. Okay? So mm-hmm. they say infinite, everywhere at once, eternal creator that is Trinity. That does not tell you anything. It doesn't mean anything. It it's mean, actually meaningless. It's fluff. It's literally today is yesterday's tomorrow, but tomorrow today will be yesterday. Okay? <laughs> like, that's not like. Thanks, like, Master <laughs> Ugwe. Like, I'm so enlightened now. This is literally. I got in trouble because I said this once online. The way they describe God in the Athanasian Creed is the Gaston song. Like, it's yeah. literally just, <laughs> oh my no gosh. one's strong like our God, no one runs like our God, no one. It's like, you've not actually told me anything. You've just used hype terms. No one's in every place all at once like yeah, exactly. our God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And here's the thing. This is why you go, you go, uh, go to a Christian church. And you'll notice the difference between the pastor and the pew. Because the normal yeah. families go in there. How do you imagine God? The normal run of the mill guy just says, oh, you, they imagine a person. The pastor, well, it's not a per- The father's not a person. Well, the son is a person. Well, depending on which church. Some believe he doesn't, Jesus isn't a person anymore. But but the father is a spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the second spirit personage of the God. Okay, wait. The Holy Spirit is the second. Yes, well, they're all one. Where does the first spirit start and the second spirit end? Well, they, they're, they're all, you can't differentiate between the two. So there's just two spirits. Well, there's three, but there's three. What? 
it is not it doesn't make sense whenever we do our man in the street content and you pointed this out to me as well whenever we do our man in the street content and we ask people describe god they intuitively in those bodies created in his image with the intuition that he gave us they intuitively always describe the mormon or better said lds manifestation of god yeah. they don't describe the athanasian creed the council of trent god they don't describe the proto-orthodox god they don't describe the whatever non-denominational christian god he has they describe the mormon god for lack of a better term everyone did and every single person yes and i would venture to guess that your average christian thinks of god as their father in a very similar way to the way that the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints does not in this weird Ain't Trinitarian. no Christians who are not pastors praying to a trinity. None of them are like, I'm going to pray to the omnipresence, everything. Also, is if he's ever, is God in hell? That's true. Oof. Is he in hell? If he's everywhere at once, so he's in hell. Well, oh, he's bigger than that. Is it, look, there, it's... it's <laughs> It is at best confusing, and and this is why That's Joseph the- Smith in the first vision, it, it talked about the creeds being an abomination. Okay, he wasn't talking about the commitment of the individual members like the evangelicals always try and lampoon him. He's literally talking about the confusing nature of creeds that disassociate the average person from their God, which then just makes it easier for Satan to manipulate and trick them. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, let's keep going. Let's let yeah, this guy talk. Let let's let out. him bury himself. Yes. Um. Here we go persons all equally divine and we get this theology from matthew 28 19 second corinthians 13 14 first corinthians 12 4 through 5 ephesians 4 4 through 6 first peter 1 2 and revelation 1 4 through 5 so hey are that- those worth actually going back and he, fact checking he, to he's see if not he does- gonna read any of them you're well, right he's not gonna read any of that, them but by the way that's the <laughs> mo that's uh-huh. the mo they do two things and i know this because i've literally listened in on their training when they talk about how to witness to mormons Read off a bunch of scriptures really fast. And then when you, you say, okay, if I ask a question, okay, where does the Father Spirit start and where does the Holy Spirit begin if they're just two bodiless spirits? They'll go to a verse and they'll say, let me explain this to you. And they'll read it and they'll give an exhaustive 15 minute long explanation that doesn't actually cover the verse. Mm-hmm. It's just speaking around it. So <laughs> they are literally taught when witnessing to Mormons to just be as vague but long winded as possible. Or be super, super short and throw a bunch of scriptures on the screen and not let you fact check it. That, so, that's so true. So we're going to fact check it, it right sense. now. Yeah, that, it's, they, what, they're it's trained to do this. Vaguely, yeah. Okay, so wait, hold exact, on a second. I got 2819. I, I already have it up right now. Oh, you do? What is it? What it, is it says, say? go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name <laughs> of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. That says nothing also, of the Trinity. When you get baptized uh, as a member of the church, we baptize you in the, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we do that, as that, in the LDS church. He, wait, he just proved us right. Wait a second. Okay, they just, just, they just, just name verses and run. <laughs> wait, he, they just he literally just listed verses that say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, <laughs> yeah, I think. Guy, yeah. Wait, yeah. hold on. So, but his claim was that we got it wrong. Let's listen to the claim again. Hold on a second. This is his claim that we get wrong. Hold on. The first difference comes from the question, who is God? Yeah, Seems like God? a pretty straightforward question, right? Yes. Well, the views are kind of different. In Christianity, we believe that God is the personal, eternal, infinite creator of the universe. He's Where was that in Matthew 20? All powerful, everywhere yeah. at once, and he's the only God that there is. He exists eternally as a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Pause, pause. One God, three persons. I'm trying to. There we go. Okay. He exists as a trinity. So first, first, trinity is three. I know they get mad when you say, but you get, okay, it's three. He even did this thing, right? Which is just a three, not like the okay thing. Okay, don't don't, don't cancel me. Okay, so how is it a he? First, if the Father... By the way, who I know he's probably going to say how we believe God is a person with a body. If the Father Spirit is bodiless, it's probably therefore genderless. The Holy Spirit is also genderless and neither. So God is a he, but God consists of three, which are two two parts of the three are genderless and one has a gender. So calling him, so is all of God the Father he? Or is part of God just the he? And that's the father or two thirds of God. But you can't say two thirds because they're just one. So you can't divide into three, although you're counting three. 
do, do you understand how the like it, by the is, way i noticed that one of the scriptures i don't believe he actually put up on the screen and conveniently left out is the one that says jesus christ came up out of the water so christ is in the water separate and then the holy ghost comp- descends as a dove yeah with the holy ghost descending as a dove and then the voice of the father and then the voice of the father Which separately means- saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he conveniently left out John 17, where Christ is kneeling, praying to himself, and then asks that we can all become one like he is one with the Father. Yeah. So I'm sorry, cool youth pastor who has the hip. Wait, let's go through the LA rest of his Dodgers scriptures. Hat. Yeah, I want to go through the rest of the scriptures because that's their MO always. Let's go back. I'll take the um, the second one in Corinthians and First Corinthians. Okay, you always say that they just Second list a bunch Corinthians of, thirteen fourteen that they just list a bunch of scriptures and run. So I'm going to try and see if I can find that scripture list again. Here it is, right here. Boom. Four through six. First Peter one two and Revelation one four through five. So what? okay, so there Wait, is your little list right I'll take there. Take Second Corinthians thirteen. Okay. Do, 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 do. Wait, is it First Peter? So there's Second Corinthians thirteen fourteen, and then there's First Corinthians. Oh, let's look at the cool list. He, I give this guy credit for cool graphics. Yeah, the graphics you know are saying? awesome. I give this guy credit for making. All right, okay, I found it. Second Corinthians thirteen fourteen. Okay. Oh, this one kills us actually. Oh, what is it? (laughs) The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. He just typed in Father, Son, Spirit on his Christian app. (laughs) That's literally what he did. (laughs) Gosh, it's like we've dealt with these guys our whole lives, Brad, and they never—they always do the same thing. Yep. Uh, oh, and here it is. Yep. Okay. Ephesians four four through six. Hey, I referenced this one earlier, actually. Okay. Um, there's one body and one spirit, and even as you are called in the hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Explain to me, Christian, why are so many of your denominations not of one faith, one Lord, or even one baptism? You can't get there. Now, six is the one that he was really kind of going for, Mm -hmm. which is one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Yeah. So that that's God who's heavenly father. Yes. Above all. He is above all. all, Through all. And in you all. And in you all. However, God is God. Then separate from him is Jesus Christ. And then separate from both of them is the Holy Ghost. It's almost like that was made purposeful by making it three different verses. Yeah. (laughs) And and by the way, this is what Brian Godawa talks about in his very popular evangelical book series called uh, Noah Primeval. I believe it is. It's one of the most popular evangelical teen book series or whatever. And um, he says it's a very uncomfortable truth that we have to get used to as evangelical Christians. The idea of monolatry that. You can believe that there is an all-powerful, all-knowing God, all right, but there's also other gods out there, else what do you call an angel? Like, how can you say that I believe in God, but he's the only God out there and the only God that exists, Mm -hmm. but these angels that he keeps sending that aren't men because they are immortal and have supernatural powers, what do you call those things? You can't call them anything else other than gods with a little g, which all of a sudden puts you in this pantheon of gods where there's plural here, just like the Old Testament says in the council of the heaven with the gods. It's like these people only read the anti-Mormon weird interpretation Bible verses that have been recycled by pastors since the 1830s because they were jealous. Our missionaries took all of their members that were bored with their old, outdated creeds that no longer made sense or held water with the new revelation, and and they don't know any of the new stuff. I think he's trying to use this one to, like, establish God as omnipresent, you know, and omnipowerful. Okay, sure. Omnipotent, sorry. Mm -hmm. But, like, Father of all, above all, and through all, and in you all. That's, but we believe in God. And we believe and we in believe him in, in Jesus this Christ. way. We believe that God is above all and, and through I, I all. I just checked out the other two. It's the same thing. It's just yeah. versus referencing three. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this poor kid. He could never get through a real college. These weird uh, evangelical colleges and divinity schools. It's always like you could get a master's degree to become a pastor. Like you just have to like think Catholics suck but not as bad as Mormons and then throw a bunch of scriptures on the screen. And then I swear they just give you these degrees. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And and, 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 I don't know, dude, it's, I gotta say, 
the dudes from Valley Church were a lot cooler so far. <laughs> you yes. know what I'm saying? Okay, let's keep going, and we're going to chapter three of his YouTube video, Let Him Speak for Himself. Oh my gosh, it just stopped on that frame. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really funny frame to stop on. Oh, no. But we didn't do that to you on purpose, bro. Sorry, man. We didn't man. do that to you on don't, purpose. Don't keep it on the frame. <laughs> Just press play. play. Yeah, here we go. Kind of a red flag. The second difference comes from the question, who is Jesus? So wait. Christians believe that wait, Jesus- pause for a second. Did he say kind of a red flag? Kind of a red flag, but then didn't share what the Latter-day Saints believe God is. So well, he's let, moving. Let's give Maybe a he'll chance. do that after the let, Let's three. give him a okay. chance. Here we go is God incarnate. He existed eternally with God and he put on flesh and bones as a man on earth born of Virgin Mary. Now, pause, on earth, pause, he pause. I thought the Father, Son, and the Spirit were God. How did he exist with God? That insinuates a separation if he is God Yeah, like, and a, the two-thirds of you, the you God. You can't defend the Athanasian Creed that all these people... Just demand. It is, it is the nice. theological Most version. Most of them have never read it. Hey, it is the theological version of this. <clears throat> the original machine had a base plate of prefabulated amulet surmounted <laughs> by a malleable <laughs> logarithmic casing in such a way that the two spurring bearings were in a direct line with a pentametric fan. It's nonsense talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's gobbledygook. That it's let the people who were putting it forward at the time establish power for themselves it's yeah. like a ma a word problem in like third grade where it's like well if sam bought 48 watermelons <laughs> and it's 2 30 in the day and a train is running through at 48 miles direct the rotation of the sun yeah, <laughs> yeah that's funny okay let's let him keep going this yeah, is a yeah. much more flattering frame he's yes. a handsome looking kid i can he see is. why they chose no he definitely pulls he pulls those evangelical girls at his, at his college No, I think church. he's married. I think I see a ring right there. Oh, okay. I see, oh, wow. He probably pulled. His wife's probably beautiful. Awesome. And the disclaimer, I, we need to add that um, we love even everyone and that we'll put in the, um, uh, the what is it? The yeah. We, the Ten Commandments, we'll add that in there. Yeah, we love you in the actual biblical sense of love where we, without benefit to ourselves, want your well-being. And <laughs> that sometimes... sounded weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but love is not selfish. Love is kind, yeah, I know, right? I know. Like, so without any kind of benefit to us, we... Agape style. Yeah, agape style. We hope that this man is disabused of bad narratives in his life. One of those bad narratives is the Athanasian Creed. We should well probably not make fun of him while we do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Is we're trying to be a little more Christ-like in our love in here, although it is fun to dunk. But we should just tone down the dunk in yes, a little bit. And I'm sorry for what I said earlier. Okay. And you can criticize me, even though. Don't I'm... worry, we will. <laughs> Will's twelve. So, he gets a pass. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Will's don't say that. Pass. We might be striked by our oh, yeah, YouTube yeah. algorithm. Yeah. We'll so here we go. Let's out. let him finish talking. We're only literally one minute and forty-seven seconds in. But here we go. <laughs> He had two natures, his divine nature and his human nature. He was all God and he was all man. He lived a sinless life and therefore he was able to die on a cross for our sins, for our transgressions, redeeming our right standing with God in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So Mormons believe that Jesus isn't the same as God, but Jesus actually was born of God. Now. Why did he say that? Though, like that was such a weird distinction. Yeah, like he's the son. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's the son of God. <laughs> they son... they believe he's the son of God. Doctor, That's what... doctor, you're telling me this son was born of me. <laughs> <laughs> he was born of Mary like, and his father that uh, we spoke about and prophesied in scripture. Like we actually muted the high priest until he named him. <laughs> like, you know, I was, well, actually, that was talking about John the say, Baptist. But his anyway. background music is going like Yeah, it's really pumping. pumping. It's got royalty-free cool. YouTube music yeah. that you, yeah. you download yeah. on the It sounds MP3 almost louder, louder than his like, confidence but it's right the, now. It's the oh evangelical... My <laughs> oh my gosh. I forgot. Well, <laughs> you Will is savage. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, you can, you so, can tell he's related to Cardin. Yeah. You can tell yeah, Will's related funny. to Cardin. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Let's see what else he has to say. Another unflattering thumbnail. I'm sorry. This gets a little fuzzy because since Jesus was born from God, they believe that Jesus is actually our eldest brother. Yes, if it is God the Father <laughs> who created all mankind in his image and Jesus Christ was his firstborn son, 
all of the other children of God that we speak about in the Bible where it's, that are the children of God and his firstborn son that that would by default make them all brothers and sisters. Like this is literally in the Bible. This is Romans 8. This like, is this Genesis. Is, yeah. <laughs> the first chapter of Genesis. No, no, but really clearly like we are joint heirs with Christ. How are we supposed to be joint heirs with Christ if we're not siblings with him? Hey, you need to put a bunch of scriptures on the screen that have vague references to one of the words and, that you used in okay. a sentence. Never expound on them. Hey, Just no, throw wait, them up wait, there. Wait. You're telling me homeboy is arguing about biology like he's mad <laughs> that like we're relate people are related like what and, and and worse yet we're related in christ we're related as brothers and sisters no. under the mantle of god and, and literally romans 8 17 like if children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ yeah so we're children and we're joint with christ that would make him our brother, mate. <laughs> it sounds to me like the Bible is Wait, telling us. But is the opposite then that Jesus is the Father? So it's the Father, the Father, and the Holy Spirit? I thought it was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is literally like when the the, the, the pro-abortion people try and say like, it's not a human. Uh, it's but, but, but it's going to... To, uh, there's no other DNA. It's it's not monkey DNA in there. It's not you know dinosaur DNA in there. It's well, but but no no no. It's not a baby. It's a zygote you know, that will become a baby. Like even Bill Burr is just like you know, hey, if I'm baking a bun in the oven and you take out my bun in the oven and you throw it on the floor, sure, it may not have been you know a cake yet or a bun. But it was gonna be a bun, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, yeah. so yeah, sure. Whatever weird scriptural alphabet soup you're trying to do to make us not brothers and sisters, if God the Father <laughs> demands to be called God the Father, and He says, "This is my my primogenito," as we say in Spanish, my firstborn son, and then all the others are my children created in my image, they inherently have to be <laughs> brothers and sisters in a binary system. All right, literally, no, I, the Bible supports our position so much more. Than the Athanasian Creed, it, it Dude, I, literally, I mean, what's the op the opposite is Zeus and shiz. It's literally <laughs> like Hermes and like those gods that are not really human. They're like a weird kind of like. What do you want? Like, if this is where you're picking your, if this is the, let me tell you something. Uh -huh. They believe Jesus was a son. Yeah. <laughs> Like he's making and, and the way he said okay, it, on. as if this was the weirdest possible thing we could it's believe. It's the arrogance that gets like, to me. Yeah, yeah. He's arrogance. making us sound like we're polytheistic right now. Like, well, yeah. I, I, yeah. Let, let's well, let's go. Yeah, let's let's just keep going. Okay, so here we go. Let's let him talk. See, they believe that all men and women on earth are brother and sisters, and so therefore, because Jesus was born of God and was not God, were siblings with him. This is. He's trying yeah. so hard to make this sound confusing. Yeah. He's yes. doing all the, well, they think that if you have a kid and this cousin is born and on like a Tuesday. And like it's a bad like, thing. <laughs> yeah. He's acting Back like it's a bad problem. thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and, and he's that doing that because. Related? Because they try to make it seem like, hey, you're making yourselves like God to say that you're like Jesus Christ. The entire message in the New Testament is that we should be like Christ. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm Let's try. listen to this one again. Let's listen to this one again. This one's funny. Here we go. Our brother and sisters. And so therefore, because Jesus was born of God and was not God, were siblings with him. Yes. This is also where the Satan is Jesus's brother comes in. Yeah. Well, that, that would make sense that if everybody else in that council of heaven when the dragon came down, as it said in the book of Revelation, it took one third of the hosts of heaven with him. OK, that if we're all children of God, that inherently even he who fell from grace, Lucifer, that star fallen from heaven, as the book of Revelation, Revelation said, would have been a brother of all of us, not just Jesus Christ. This isn't some big fat scandal. Also, it, why is that so weird? Like when people are like. They say they're brothers. Judas like, Iscariot was also a brother. Uh-huh. Like, he was literally a brother in Christ, one of the 12. Like, why is this so hard for evangelicals to understand? I, I literally don't think they could articulate to you why this is weird. They just say it's weird. There's a betrayer among us. The first great betrayer was Satan. The second great betrayer was Cain. The third great, great betrayer, I'd argue, was Judas Iscariot. The fourth... 
I don't know, the guy that stabbed Caesar. <laughs> Et tu brute. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like this, why is this so hard for these guys to do? And the worst part is this smug little noggin of his <laughs> acting like we're the stupid ones uh-huh. when this brother can't explain to me why this is so novel. Oh, wait, I get it. What? What, what is it? What is it? He's an only child. Oh. I, don't guess. I knew you. No, here's what. Okay. But also, I mean, you could make... Mormons believe uh-huh. that Helen Keller and Danny DeVito are siblings. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah, technically, but it's yeah, not like we think they hang out. Yeah. By the way, we this... think Jesus and Satan are like pals, like the sweet life of Zach and Cody, like they're running around the Tipton Hotel <laughs> getting into shenanigans. Like, I mean, But it, it's I... also established Satan straight up walks into heaven. Can I tempt Job? And God's there like, he's going to pick me. Like that's written about in the scripture. <laughs> Satan He's tempted and Jesus. Satan tempted Jesus. And by the way, it's not just Satan that's a brother. So was Beelzebub, Legion. All of these are brothers and sisters of God that unfortunately chose incorrectly in the war in heaven that's documented not in the Book of Mormon, not in the Apocrypha of the Catholic Bible, not in the lost book of Enoch. Well, or Didymus though. Thomas. Well, well it, what it is, is there you know? in Enoch, yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, you're right, yeah. it is. That was a bad example. But, you know, this <laughs> is all biblical, bro. And so if you're loving the Sola Scriptura, you should be much more familiar with this. But you're not, because most anti-Mormon arguments are recycled arguments that were scrapped together really, really fast on the weekend before the Mormon missionaries came in 1845 <laughs> and took half of your congregation away from you because your congregation realized, yeah, this confusing Athanasian creed sucks, doesn't work, and those people are a lot more happy over there we're going with them pastor <laughs> okay let's by let the way continue. they know how to fix things and build buildings because they learned crafts and they don't get money for being pastors you know what i'm saying <laughs> you never built anything in our town we're leaving <laughs> you know what i'm saying see, i want to see him get more confused about like okay siblings okay let's see this let's see this that was really funny brad i give you credit on that one so here we go i don't know that gets kind of hairy and mormons believe that his why death does that get hairy though <laughs> Why does that get hairy? I have never had anyone tell me how it gets hairy that Satan and Christ were brothers. Yeah, how does it get hairy that... Watch, check this out. This this may blow your mind. I okay? also don't like the figure but, of language. Harry, like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> use something else. So, like, so, well, think about that. How many famous people have ironically had really crazy nephews? Bless his soul. I'm sorry he passed, but Aaron Carter is the brother of... Nick Carter. Nick Carter, is it that hard to believe that Nick Carter, big boy band superstar that everybody loves, has a rough and tumble black sheep brother that doesn't make good choices and kind of became a druggie? Yeah, guess what? Guess what? Who just shot their cinematographer in the face on the set of Rut? Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. Does he have brothers that have become a little bit less disgraceful? Nobody's got a hot niece named Haley Bieber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, hey, oh, my gosh. Dude, so it's like, I mean, come on. How is this so hard? Like, I feel why like, does this cause consternation? I feel bro? like the main reason that it bugs people is because it's said by someone making this face. Yeah. <laughs> That's Literally, I'm going to try this. I'm going to go to Costco. So I grabbed a cart and put food in it. And now you want me to slide this plastic credit card to take money? Like this gets kind of hairy. Red flag. <laughs> red it's kind flag. of. It's red flag. No, sir. Yeah. Pay for your food. <laughs> like, I, like, I was like, okay, so here okay. we go. Here we go. We got our constipated youth pastor here. Let's say, see what he's got to do. Oh no. Uh, Satan as Jesus's brother comes in. I don't know. That gets kind of hairy. And Mormons believe oh. that his death granted everybody immortality. Yes, because there's a difference between immortality and well, salvation. Let him finish. It's, it's a purposeful. Maybe I've okay. never heard anyone actually explain that well. So uh, he maybe has, he's okay. Let's see what he's got to say. Regardless of their faith, regardless of who they put their trust in, they believe that the atonement of Jesus is for every single person on earth. Oh, by the way, it's so hilarious that half the evangelicals say that we don't believe that, that we believe in acts only, and that we're mistaken, and now he's doing the exact opposite. Yeah, he is. Yeah. This, this is you a know? pretty intense, like, grace only right here. Yeah, this so guy. this is really funny, and just more proof that evangelicals well, pause, cannot get on the same page about if, anything. If this is false, though, then that would mean he doesn't believe in hell. Because let's say you were, you were to go to hell. Hell is forever. So, like... 
do not believe immortality is like do you believe if you're not saved you just stop existing like your consciousness you're it's just like boom because there is an element of immortality no matter what because of jesus that all because the system was created by god and jesus is god so if jesus who is god to created this system which you're, you're gonna exist forever but you want to go to a good place not a bad place he believes this too so mm -hmm. unless he's one of the christians who believes that it's heaven or nothing but I'm assuming it's not what this guy believes. It's a very small amount of Christians. So what's he complaining about? Yeah, like yeah, let's let's let you him can't continue. believe in eternal damnation if you don't believe in eternity. And to survive eternity, you have to be immortal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it's like I, this I, I bet he's somewhere on the vein of like uh, resurrection only happens for. I don't think he's on that People vein. This is Christ. just all recycled. But he, and if he was, he could have said that. He didn't say that they. Bl let's more let him, let's let him finish and see let's if let he keep goes anywhere let's more. Let him keep talking. This is crazy, man. Let's see. So we're kind of over two right now. Now the third thing that we're covering over two? is the Holy Scriptures. So Christians oh, believe that go. the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament is all divinely inspired by God. Oh, do you? Because last time the Catholics checked in with an apocrypha that had <laughs> seven to ten extra books, you weren't exactly so welcoming. You know what I'm there, saying? There's a debate I want everybody to watch. Um, oh, crud. How am I missing his name? Um, it's, it's James White, everyone's favorite. Versus, uh, who is who is the dude who is like he he became ex Mormon. He lives in California. He's got super white hair. Um, crud. Is he the rocker? The one that ended up being a rocker? That I don't know who you're talking about. Lee Baker. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think his name is Lee Baker and James White are debating. Okay. And it's actually very interesting to watch, just as watch as human, like as looking at two human beings, because James White is there, kind of smug, and he's like. I know everything about Christianity. And Lee Baker was an ex-Mormon. Because I went to the University of Phoenix. I mean, I went to uh, no, overpaid. No, he, he went to an unaccredited uh, university. It looked like a DMV. I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah. Look it up on a map. Yeah, it's it like is a real, it's a silly not a glamorous place. But anyway, <laughs> but whatever, building doesn't matter. The point is, um, Baker, as LDS, left the church, became a born-again Christian, and then left that. And he's debating James White, saying, I think you guys are lying the same way I think the Mormon church is lying. And he brings up the fact that um, I he's like I was not taught that the story of the woman caught in adultery was not in any of the original uh, uh, transcripts. Yeah, it shows up about four hundred years after our oldest manuscript. And, and, and James White just going, we all know that. Everyone knows that. And he goes, no, no one knows that. You guys might, but no, every other normal Christian thinks that's been there forever. Like you're saying, it's not really inspired. He goes, yeah, but that's the thing every Christian knows. And, he, and he, so he's being so Lee Baker's getting gaslighted on stage. Uh huh. Because. I can go anywhere, any state where there's Christians. I go up to a 25-year-old boy or girl and say, do you know what the woman's story, the one caught in adultery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He without sin cast the first stone. Did you know that that like, wasn't in there for a couple hundred years? No? Like, nobody yeah, knows neither that. Neither were the last 13 or 14 verses in the book of Mark. Mm -hmm. All the cool stuff about like you know snakes won't well, they'll bite you and Paul's you won't letter get to sick Timothy and, the book probably not like it's all the awesome. Gospel of John <laughs> was added after the Book of Revelation. So anyway, it, it, he they they, they are ga they gaslight LDS people and say we all believe this whole thing is the divine inspired word of God. As soon as we leave the room, all right, so half of this ain't true. Like that's literally yeah, yeah. how fast they change their attitude when they're just uh -huh. with their buddies with the degrees. So this is gaslighting. It's total manipulation. And like it, it, it's so publicly documented how much the position switched sides. They don't believe that. Like the pastors who train and get these degrees don't believe that it's all an inspired word of God. And they lie and manipulate their audience when they want to attack Mormons by saying they do. So th th that bothers me a lot. Anyway. No, I feel you. I yeah. feel, okay, let's keep going. Let's let him bury himself here. Let's see what he's got to say. Oh, that's a much more flattering picture. That's kind of funny. Teeth. Yeah, he's great he teeth. Are you kidding me? That's Personal hilarious. Nerve. So we're kind of over two right now. Now, the third thing that we're covering is the Holy Scriptures. So Christians believe that the Bible, Old Testament, and New Testament is all divinely inspired by God. It is his breath, it is his truth, and it is the foundation and the reference that we as Christians have when it comes to understanding what truth is and how to navigate in this world. Yeah, it is cool. the sole authority when it comes to Christian faith and practice. Oh, see, oh. that's the big problem with all these. Where are people. your creeds now? Yeah, this is the problem with the, the whole sole authority. 
Okay, you're gonna have the Bible as your sole authority, but you're gonna tell us that your Athanasian Creed God is the one that is the right one. Okay. Now, you're an idiot. Here's the biggest problem. What the heck? He just literally said the Bible is I'm the sorry, I shouldn't say he's an idiot. You're just yes, you should. confused. I um, love him. So here here's the big huge problem with the sola scriptura argument when he says the Bible is the sole authority. It is incoherent. Martin, yeah, not just the incoherence, but Martin Luther famously, when he wanted to break away from the Catholic Church that had the authority given to them, according to them, in an unbroken chain all the way back to Jesus Christ. If he wanted to go off and start his own church, he had to find a way to justify the authority of that church. And if he was leaving and forsaking the priesthood of the Catholics to start his own thing, he had to justify to all of his new followers, from whence do I get my authority? If I don't have the authority that the Catholic church has, who has an unbroken chain back to Jesus, where does my authority come from? The Bible itself. And sola scriptura was born. All right. Now, here's the only problem with that idea, though. And this is why the Catholics and the Mormons are the only people that get it right, assuming one of them has the authoritative argument. If you say the Bible is the only authority of God, what are you going to do when all the prophecies in the Bible actually come true and Jesus comes again? Jesus could walk into the room in the millennium with all of these pastors and they would reject him and say, you can't speak on authority here because what you just said didn't come out of the Bible. Yep. Literally. And they never refute. Anti-Mormons never refute scripture. They only fulfill it. And what is the verse in the Book of Mormon that predicted this? A Bible, a Bible. We have got a Bible. We have got a Bible. We need no more Bible. We need no more Bible for when they are learned. They think they are wise. They think they are wise. And they Um, haven't realized they couldn't survive their own millennium. Yes. And I need to apologize to this guy again for calling him an idiot. I know I shouldn't do that. I just (laughs) get so bugged. Well, look, he forgives you. With the smugness of like (laughs) telling me that your incoherent philosophy is somehow this is what defines what a Christian is. No. A um, followers of Christ, bro. By the way, and can I just say, as someone who was again, I, I had a, a, a Protestant upbringing. That's that's a youth pastor joke that like they give on the Wednesday night Awanis Christian service. Like, and the Mormons, <laughs> they're over two, and like ten people who have a crush on the youth pastor go ha 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 ha. That like awkward like <coughs> church giggle, like that yeah. would have gotten a laugh. Mm-hmm. So I know why he did it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I'm sorry for saying that you have low confidence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, and you can criticize me for it, but I don't think you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. You know he shouldn't. Here we go. Let's let him finish. We're about halfway through. So Mormons believe that the Bible is true, quote, as far as it has been translated correctly. Yes, we just made the argument about John in the last 14 verses of And Mark so do and- you, if you're going to say any of your dumb buzzwords of freaking exegesis or eisegesis. How is that different than being translated correctly? By well, the way- if, you, if you line up all the papyri and you look at it on with a magnifying glass on Tuesday, then what happens... No, no, look, I'm sorry. There are so many different um, translations of the yeah. Bible. Yes. I was going to say the Hundreds. same Hundreds. Did this guy use the Ethiopian Tejado Orthodox Bible or the Armenian Orthodox Bible? Or the New King James or the New International Version? <laughs> or, the or the New, New World, World Translation no, of no. the Jehovah's look, look, Witnesses? They all, well, except for those weird African ones. They all have the <laughs> same message. Well, kind of. What, what, what about how it says um, we're going to be... Um, kings and priests but then some say we're going to be a kingdom of priests and then some say we're going to be kings priests and then some say we're going to be priest kings like literally you believe in this too we're just honest about it we yep. just go you know what we believe in it as far as you got the right translation translate and, it and correctly. feel free when he sees this and then <laughs> makes a response video to explain to us how making your exegesis he can't, they're always afraid the number one rule of anti-mormons Sorry, the uh, number, number seven. Four, no, the, the yeah, the number seventh is they will not engage, but like they, you can't, you can't refute what was just done here. They never can, so they don't engage, man. You Literally, the entire process of exegesis re- it relies on believing the Bible as far as it's translated correctly. Also, let's take this logic anywhere else. Okay, you're in a divorce. You're looking at the documents. And your wife asks, um, "Are you are you gonna are you gonna sign them?" 
Yeah, what's you haven't the had a chance to look over. You haven't chance to look over yet. Yeah, I'll, fi- I'll sign as long as you know it, it holds up to muster. What? Like, <laughs> like I, this is just. I cannot believe we get criticized on the most. We believe it's true, but we want to make sure you're reading the right stuff. I and here's the other thing is why if you didn't believe the Bible to be the word of God as far as it is translated to correctly, why would you have so many different academic translations? Why would you require your pastors to learn the original Greek? Yep. Why would you do all of this stuff that you do at Sounds your University like of Phoenix Divinity School? That shouldn't matter, huh? Yeah, it's like, I don't know. I just, we, literally, the University of Phoenix needs to start just offering divinity schools. So, <laughs> oh, Josh. Here we go. We'll let them finish. Oh, what is that? Now, I know that's confusing language, and I was confused as well, because back in the 1800s, Joseph Smith, who was Pause. a self-proclaimed... Wait, wait, wait. That is not confusing language, were, and if you were admitting that you were confused by that... You're kind of... Oh, no, I can't. This yeah, guy I need to be nice. He, this guy has mastered nice. the... You He's might massive. be confused by wanting things to be accurate, but you know what I was, okay. in the 1890s, this one was <laughs> one confusing about as far as it is translated correctly. Okay, you're right. Now, this is the kicker. Like for a guy that just said they're kind of a little bit stupid and what they're saying is confusing, he's about to do a doozy that is really funny. Uh, we'll rewind just like five seconds so you get it again, but here we go. And practice. So Mormons believe that the Bible is true, quote, as far as it has been translated correctly. Yes. Now I know that's confusing language and I was confused as well because back in the 1800s, Joseph Smith, who was the self-proclaimed prophet of Mormonism, he came out and said that, oh, there's actually more works that are inspired by God. There's the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine of Covenants, ah, the Pearl oh, of the Great Price. And Pearl of the Great Price. You didn't even get the names right. The Doctrine of Covenants? Of, and then Pearl of the Great Price. <laughs> that, that's literally, you know what that reminded me of? This guy is no different than Donald Trump when he went to that one evangelical college. And this, and, and this <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do you remember when Donald Trump Where the Spirit like, of the Lord is, that's the verse you like, right? That's the liberty. Yeah. Where the Spirit is the Lord is liberty. We're at Liberty no, College. That one. Yeah. No, no, no. You, no, there was a worse gaffe. There was a worse gaffe. He said, I'm the best Christian. Like, many people don't know this, but I'm Presbyterian. In fact, uh, you know, and then he reads him a scripture. He says, uh, indeed, it says in uh, 2 Corinthians that, uh, you know, oh, we should no. be. And it's like, you mean 2 Corinthians? You cannot convince. There was this universal just groan of all the students. If you try and say that I'm not just a Christian, I'm the best Christian. There's never been a better Christian. I just ooze golden Christian. You can't say you're the best Christian out there and then butcher 2 Corinthians as 2 Corinthians. <laughs> so here he is saying, I know all about Mormons and I can tell you exactly why they're wrong. And I can tell you all they get wrong and how their creeds are bogus because in the pearl with great pricelesses, there's, you know, it's the pearl of great price and it's the doctrine and covenants. Yes. Not the doctrine of covenants. And another point to focus on, he just casually throws in there that Joseph Smith was a self-appointed prophet. Yeah. (laughs) He was called by God. Yeah. I think that's actually something you should take seriously. He got a lot more blessing from God than Martin Luther did. Yes. Martin the Luther. The starter of your reformation, okay? Yeah. The and, one who and Don't be don't be bashing religious leaders books cuz your boy Martin Luther wrote one book. We can't even say the name of it on YouTube without getting pinged. On the j- 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 Jesuits? <laughs> yeah. And on their the, lies? On the ooze and their lies. Remember that book he wrote about yeah, how the... you should subjugate and persecute Jewish people? Remember that one, buddy? Yeah, Protestant <laughs> Martin Luther on the J- 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 Jacksons and their lies? <laughs> maybe, you know just maybe, the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants and the Pearl of Great Price are actually better than that. Yeah, so More here useful. we go. Here we go. This is hilarious. I'm going to just 10 seconds back and let's go. Works that are inspired by God. There's the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine of Covenants, <laughs> the Pearl of the Great Price, the Pearl of and the... anybody who happens to be president of the religion actually has the authority to translate. And so Mormons have added works onto the inspired word of God. And what's actually interesting is Joseph Smith actually said that the Book of Mormon was the most accurate book on earth. 
Yes, because he was claiming to have received basically pure revelation in yep. order to convert it from revelatory to uh, colloquial let, speech, which is that thought. translation we're talking about. Okay, yeah. let him finish the spot. Making it more accurate than the Holy Bible. Now, obviously, that is a huge contradiction to the Christian faith because we believe that nothing can be added and nothing can be taken away from the Holy Spirit. Oh, he went there. Oh. Were, you, were you quoting from Deuteronomy? You know, oh, wait, Deuteronomy wait. 4, where it says that. So, so I guess if you're quoting from Deuteronomy when you said this, that you can't add anything to the Bible. So I guess you're stuck with just Deuteronomy up. From Do you Genesis. want to take this one? No, th no there's no it? New Testament. There's no New Testament for him. Yeah. Or if you're looking at it from the book of Revelations, which is conveniently put at the very end. Yeah. That's not the last book added to the Bible. It also says the this book of prophecy. Yes. Which is specifically talking about the book of Revelations, right? So neither of the verses that say not to add or take away from the Bible are meaning what he says. In fact, they do mean that you should not add nor take away from God's word, yeah. which you are doing if you don't listen to the Book of Mormon and it's actually inspired of God. Also, does this guy think the Bible just all came out at once? Yeah. <laughs> like the Taylor Swift tickets? Like, hey, 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 I'm dropping it tonight. And I was like, ah! in the bible no first first it's a bunch of records yes all compiled all throughout the near east okay it doesn't become an official book until everybody written in the bible is dead and had been dead for a while and then they were arguing over that book and then they had to they had to hide transcriptions of certain things in caves and and near the sheep and and, and then by the way here's the craziest part about it had to wait for the printing press. Then there's fighting over that. And then you have to translate it. And then you got to make, no, we only can read it where the priest and bing, 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 bing. Is it the Vulgate or the Masoretic? Or yeah, the, and, which one are we going with? And then, and then they're like, we finally have the Bible. And then the the uh, the Ethiopians are going, no, we have the Bible over here. And they're like, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's actually over here, mate. We've got the... No, we have the... We have the Egypt... Uh, the Tuharu Orthodox Bible is the complete Bible. So now they're fighting. <laughs> they're fighting. It doesn't even get freaking mass printed in every single home until after Joseph Smith is alive. So <laughs> they 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 always attach this to the yo guys are only two hundred. We're three thousand. You ain't three thousand years old. You're, you're literally you're just as old as and, us if you actually look at the way the Bible got out. And let's not forget when we found the Dead Sea Scrolls, and then you start translating those things, and it turns out. Oh, the LDS were right about basically everything. Yeah. Let's now, maybe now, stop translating before we prove them too right. Okay. Now, we do <laughs> got to get through this video. Um, I'm just going to do a summary. For any of you, we've talked a little bit of Inside Baseball these past two minutes, but for those of you who are just watching that are maybe new to this argument, okay, or for you evangelicals out there that are considering wasting money on divinity school, I'm going to save you about $5,000 of tuition from your University of Phoenix class here. Um <laughs> This is a common argument that was whipped up in about 30 seconds before the Mormon missionaries showed up to their chapel in 1850 by a bunch of pastors in the 19th century, right? But there is a verse in the book of Revelation that says nothing in this book shall be taken away or added upon. And the reason why is because plagiarism was rampant in those days. It was very easy to copy or to falsify a manuscript of the Apostle Paul or of uh, 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 Thekna or whatever the name not Thekna that's Stranger Things I was going to say is, wow that's a, there, quite there, the crossover there's, there's Thekna, the Stranger acts Stranger of Things. not Thelma that was uh, um, anyway there's there's all kinds of falsified books and apocryphal works throughout the ancient Near East because it was easy to falsify these things. So oftentimes there would be commandments at the end of sacred works or important works that would say hey you know, kind of like you get those email disclaimers that, you know, if this email wasn't meant for you, you should erase it. Well, they'd also say nobody should add or take away from this work. OK. And so common was this practice that it shows up multiple times in the Bible, also in the book of Deuteronomy. And if you were to take chapter that, four, verse two, check it yourself. Ch chapter four, verse two. And, exactly. And Cardin, let me add, let me expand on that. Well, I, I'm almost done. I'm almost okay. done for the newbies out there. What you have to realize is if you accept this literally, you cannot accept any of the New Testament after the book. I'm sorry, the Old Testament after the book of De Deuteronomy and none of the uh, New Testament. And also the book of Revelation, though it shows up at the end of your New Testament, it wasn't the last book written in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. The epistles of Jude and some of the, the book of John and so on and so forth. Those were written 20, 30, 40, 50 years later. And if you were to literally take the word of Revelation as not being able to add upon 
this work, you couldn't accept half of the epistles. Seems like that Bible isn't that perfect. Well, okay, also, here, here's the other thing people don't realize. It comes with this disclaimer. Um, he adds on to, you know, to the writing, will I add the curses and plagues written? Do you know why that that was literally a, <laughs> a, a threat slash magical protection for the parchments in the same way Egyptian tombs had to he who tries to break into this, your mouth shall be covered in serpents yeah. and locusts. Like, yep. that's a thing they did because yep. there's there's grave robbers and there's plagiarizers. So you got to protect your stuff before you hide it because yeah. the cavalry's coming to chop your head off. Like, this was so common in the ancient world. And the context is never getting. Egyptians did this. Greeks, Romans, Phoenicians, everybody did. Native Americans did it with their burial grounds. Wonder where they got that idea from. Did it yeah. with their burial grounds. <laughs> Everyone did this, okay? So it's not unique to the Bible. It's They, they didn't actually think, I can't compile this anymore because I can't add on to it. That Nobody interpreted it that way. This was a protection. That's kind of a red flag for me. Also, no, guys, they didn't even organize the Bible by chronological order at all. Like, so when you have the book of Revelation at the end, it's because it went there nicely. You no, literally, it's not because it went there nicely. It's because it's the only apocalyptic work. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I mean by it went there nicely. Okay. Because you have the epistles of Paul organized by length. Yeah. Like, this is not something that's going on like, oh, hey. You just saved them another University of Phoenix Divinity School class by yeah. telling them that the uh, epistles were uh, organized by length. I've, I've come across a couple of evangelicals that know that, too. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, here we go. Let's let him finish because it's Midnight Mormons, but it's after midnight now, and I'm getting yeah. kind of tired. So, here uh -huh. we go. You ready? Here we go. Boom. And some of the things that were added with Mormonism, we'll get to in just a second. The fourth major difference is how we view humanity. Christians believe that God created man out of his own likeness and his own image. We are image bearers of God and he breathed us into existence. Because of this, we obviously bear his image and his likeness. But we're not brothers and sisters, remember that. Now, Mormons describe humans as gods in embryo. Actually, that was C.S. Lewis, okay? That wasn't Mormons. One Mormons of your fellow call... Christians. Yeah, one of your fellow Christians that wrote the Chronicles of Narnia called us gods in embryo. I think he was pretty close and almost spot on to what the real reality is. But yeah, don't be saying that's Mormons when it's your boy C.S. Lewis, mate. Here you go. They believe that we are actually pre-existed spiritual offspring of the Heavenly Father and the Heavenly Mother. Yeah, Kinda like it like says it. in the Bible with Jeremiah before I formed thee in the womb, I know th knew thee. Like, it's pretty clear in there. Oh yeah, and when, when the disciples are asking Christ, who sinned this man or his parents that he'd be born blind? When would he would have sinned would have sinned before his birth? How would he have done that if there wasn't some pre existing already established state? I th re recognition that we are? Yeah, and by the him. way, yeah. before you act like all of Christianity agrees on this, you want to throw another hand grenade into one of those evangelical conferences? Ask them about foreordination and predestination. Ooh, <laughs> watch, yeah. watch the Calvinists. Look, those are <laughs> salvific, Cardin. Those are not salvific, okay? Dude, evangelicals don't have a foot to stand on. I'm sorry. It's just, uh, it's like, what are you talking about? Here we go. Now, I know you're probably thinking, who is the Heavenly Mother? And I, I don't know. Another thing that Mormons believe. And it's going to stay that way to keep up this nonsense. <laughs> yeah, he just <laughs> leaves it at that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he just doesn't talk about it at all. Doesn't talk about it with the LDS okay, church. So. Just... You know what's funny, though? Um, God made Adam in his image. And then right after it says, and Adam made Seth in his image. And they use that to beautifully reflect father to son, father to son, as if it's like, people they're talking about mm. and it's almost familiar oh no because he, he's is he gonna, what's gonna happen to this guy when he finds out that elohim is plural oh he's probably gonna have a meltdown and gender neutral <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> referring so to go. god creating Look, he's male a young and female kid. in their image he's a young this kid. guy's like my age yeah He's got. I know. And you're I know this kid. stuff. Yeah, I'm I, younger than he's him. He's a pastor. I probably know well, better. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what he's got to say. Oh, pinwheel. We just got pinwheel. Because as man is, God I was once happy was. When the so was as there. God is, man may become. So they're saying that. Yes. Like. Okay. So hold on. Let's listen to that. Yes. Yeah, let him. Let him no, say oh, I, his weird misunderstanding of what we said. Okay. 
father and the heavenly mother. Now, I know you're probably thinking, who is the heavenly mother? And I, I don't know. I, okay, I'm only going to pause there just because before he was mocking and lampooning us for saying that we're all children of God. And how could Lucifer be actually a brother of Jesus? Well, if we're all one big eternal family, then even though he's a betrayer, he's still a brother. Even though Judas was a betrayer, well, he was still a brother with the apostles in Christ before he was a betrayer. You know, same with Brutus, uh, all, all of the betrayers, okay? Well, you know, if we're, of all the titles that God could have chosen, from the illustrious, the immortal, the honorable, he chose the father. And what insinuations come with that? If you have a father, and then a son, and then brothers and sisters, all mentioned within the first 10 verses of the Bible, okay? What's missing? Heavenly mother. It only makes sense that there was a heavenly mother. Now, God probably has an insane amount of respect for her. So she probably doesn't have a lot of details of her existence because he loves her, doesn't want people blaspheming her like they can him, okay? But it does only make sense. Like, why do they think the doctrine of Heavenly Mother is so freaky when we're okay with father, son, I, brother, and I sister? I don't think they actually do. I think this is another situation where he's going to say it with a weird face. Like, oh, they uh, believe in a Heavenly Mother. <laughs> yeah, let me Bible this uh, guy. <clears throat> let me Bible this guy. Let me Bible this guy. Hit it. Revelation 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. So we're going to be sitting on the throne with Jesus and Jesus is sitting on the throne with the father who is God. So God's throne, Jesus' throne, our throne, that's a throne of God. What does that make us? That includes men and women. So there's going to be, dare I say, male gods and female gods? Goddesses? Dare I say, is there a heavenly mother? <laughs> you know, might there be a mother in there? If there's yep. a lot of baby making going on, might one of us sprung forth from a woman? You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, I, 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 like this whole... Hey, Revelation, j just that verse in the book of Revelation is the most clear, yeah, you become a god. Yes. And it's all throughout. I mean, joint heirs with Christ that we already went over. Now, I do think... He believes Christ is God. If we're joint heirs with Christ, what does that mean? I do think there's confusion because I think they take, they, they use the word god as such a hush-hush, no-no, that like that's the sacred word. And if we called it something else, they wouldn't even... If we called it like a shimbalu then they would be like, yeah, they believe they become shimbaloos. Like, they're just mad about the word God, which is literally just a Germanic phrase that technically means Odin. Yeah, and like, yeah, when golden. we were trying, it's <laughs> Odin, Godin, God. Like, God literally comes from the word Odin. So there's so much fighting over this word God. If we called it other things, gods with lowercase g, um, higher angels, ascended beings, Whatever you want to call it, we're eternal beings in heaven well, with ever-increasing knowledge and power and authority. And that's also what God is. We're not saying we're equal to him. He's further along than us. But the reality is we're on that throne too. So if you're mad about becoming a god, then you're mad about what God promises you. And that's a really depressed place to be. I, I was going to say, and that, that's the saddest part though, is because God wants us to address him and speak to him. Jesus Christ said, let me show you the manner of prayer. Father, which art in heaven. He didn't say, let me show you the manner of prayer. No, just don't repeat this title. Father, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, no, he didn't. He very casually, lovingly, with respect Paul, said, mm. Father, that art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done, so on and so forth. God wants us to use his name and pray. He wants us to have that close relationship. And, and when you overdo it like that, I feel it strips people of a more personal relationship with him. Keep going. So you have uh, Paul even refer to us, uh, refer to God as the father of our spirits, right? Word. It's, it's in there. It's in the Bible. It's so much more important than the creeds. 
Yeah, that's uh, we just saved you another five thousand dollars of your third um, University of Phoenix Divinity School class. <laughs> oh, so here it, we go. It's, by the way, it's in Hebrews, though, which <laughs> people debate may not have been written by Paul. Yeah, I think it probably would. Well, also, there's arguments. I know this guy that, went to but... to the Devry School of Theology, the, but you know, the that's funny. Uh -huh. Here we go. Another thing that Mormons believe is as man is, God once was. So as God is, man may become. Which is the natural essence of progression. I want my son to progress to become a man. And in that process, I will teach him lessons. If I were to die or I were to go away, I would leave him a journal behind. I would do everything I possibly could to make sure that my child progressed naturally from childhood to adulthood. Just like the Apostle Paul said, when I was a man, a young man, I did young man things. When I was an older man, I did old man things when i became a man it was time to give up childish things progression is an inherent part of our existence on this earth and what god wants for us and is it dare i say biblical well you know what's interesting about this uh-huh is this is your best news you could ever have yes because first when you when you every single teenager starts asking the question wait if god's real like why did he make suffering and like, why did he create hell? And you're like, well, he created hell. So because that's where you would have to go if you didn't accept him. Well, like, why did he create a system where someone had to suffer? Like, why couldn't he just let us all go to heaven? And and wait, if he knew we we're gonna, if we knew some of us weren't gonna go to heaven, why would he even make that? Like, what? Wh whenever you get into the vague Athanasian God, he becomes the God who purposefully and systemically created suffering and eternal suffering yep. when he didn't have to. He is not. A balance of justice, love, and mercy. And But if the process, if this is an eternal law of some sort that existed before the Heavenly Father had the authority he has, then that would actually mean that our God, the Mormon God, is not the creator, organizer, or destinator of evil and suffering. He's found a way to make sure all of his children are saved within that system. Yes. That's way better uh -huh. than worshiping a God who created suffering. It solves the philosophical problem of evil. Yeah. And I let him it's finish true. this one just because I have one thing I want to say about this, but I want to see if he okay. has but, anything more on this point. Well, he's already scowling at you. Yeah, he is. So here we go. So they're saying that we are gods in embryo, meaning that one day we could potentially be gods yes so that is obviously one of the biggest red flags here that we're seeing in the difference between christianity and mormonism is solving no. the problem of evil is a giant red flag <laughs> here, uh, okay let, let, sorry let bro finish. let him finish <laughs> okay here we go is we're not gods we're never gonna be gods but according to mormons that's not the case not no. with that attitude no um by the way how you're not <laughs> well, how ugly, how, this is another huge hang up that I have with the evangelicals. Uh, let me, let me make my point before okay. we get too far from it. Okay. One of the biggest problems that I see with this, he's saying this, he didn't even articulate this, but the thing that they generally get mad about is they're like, they say they can become like God, but God is the most all powerful. God is the most high. So we can't become like him because he's the most high. Ready for the kicker? Hit it. Our God is more powerful than yours. Because he can create beings that are like him. Oh. Your God literally is not as omnipotent as ours. Because ours is the God of the Bible. So Ooh. maybe Brad's throwing all figure out your Bible and actually believe what it says. And you'll recognize, hey, oh shoot. Those LDS people are, were right. And I need to make sure that I'm taking the Bible seriously. Instead of just sitting here and pretending that all of these things that I know are right. When you haven't actually read and studied the Bible as closely as you need to. And and here's the other part. Like, they don't realize how closely they advocate for this strange, strange form of spiritual pseudo slavery. Because if you ask them, well, what happens when we die? And, if, you know, as he said in his words, we're not gods. We're never going to become gods. That idea is anathema, you know. Well, then what do we do when we die and we go to heaven? I've asked this of my evangelical friends that think I'm all wrong. I want to debate with me. I say, okay, well, if you think our three, de three degrees of glory and, and, and our scriptural interpretation of the book of Corinthians is wrong, what do you think we do? And they never have an answer other than we're going to go to heaven and we're just going to sit there praising God. Well, let me tell you, if you knew that you had no hope 
of ever progressing or becoming like that God or whatever. Like, what's the purpose of heaven? Like, are you just supposed to sit there the glory with of this God. big king who wants you to fan him and sing his praises? And it's like, what is that? Are, are we all sleeping in barracks as angels? And then the sergeant comes in and says, wake up, everybody. Wake up, every first chorus. Run the first hour of praises to our king. Like, and, uh, second and chorus. Honestly, you know, like, by one definition, that's damnation. It's hell. I wouldn't want to go there. It's if my the only cessation job of progression is damnation. It's by the way, who wants to just wake up every day and say, "Oh, for day four thousand five hundred twenty-five million, God, thou art the greatest." Also, I'm sorry. That's an that's an insecure being. Yes, because like I created you. Just you can tell me how great I am every day. For how long? Oh no, that's just what you do now. Like 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 for for forever. That that makes literally. This is you want to know how Gnostics were created. Like I'm sorry, this guy is talking about a demiurge. Like this is straight up. Yeah, I can see why the Gnostics are like, yeah, I don't vibe with that. That sounds like Satan. Yeah, and I guarantee you, this guy's not a father. There's no way. Yeah, this guy. Hopefully, he will be. And I, I hope he out. does because I got to tell you, there was wisdom that the old rabbinical culture had, saying that you couldn't be called a teacher or a rabbi until you had children and you were married. Okay, because all kinds of wisdom comes along with having your own child. And what father? Don't forget, God the Father of all the titles he could choose, he chooses father what father comes home and says wife i desirous of thou to sing my praises children on bended knee tell me how good i am for the rest of the night we'll do it again tomorrow thank you <laughs> yeah. you know like like who uh -huh. literally does that no when i come home i want to go riding a motorcycle with my son and he was struggling a little bit yesterday getting a kickstarter but now he's getting better and so i'm going to teach him a couple of tricks and then you know he might have been a little bit afraid of taking that turn at 15 miles per hour so we're going to try 14 and then maybe we'll get 16 and then maybe the next day we'll get 18 i'm going to teach him every drop of knowledge i have of how to get along better in this life and how to be a man because i love him and an inherent part of love is a desire of his progress i don't want to just have him sit there saying dad thou art so great thou art so amazing one thing i found mm -hmm. to be helpful is to get into the nitty-gritty of this and ask them questions do you believe you will be learning things forever and they'll say yes okay do you believe you'll be given some sort of authority and power in heaven because it says you'll rule angels they go yes of course okay do you believe you'll have a physical body that kind of gets debated but usually mm -hmm. i get a yes okay if and, they follow what the bible actually says right. they'll say yes mm -hmm. do you believe that you'll like literally be able to explore forever forever as the gift of god and they say yes and i say okay congratulations because you believe joseph smith's doctrine Yep. on becoming a god because <laughs> that's what it is and now now this is one where it always gets a little dice you can tell how good their marriage or relationship is I mean, yes do you believe you'll be married forever i hope not or of course i love my wife <laughs> it's one of the yeah, two uh -huh. it's one of the two yeah. yeah i'm sorry most people innately believe this because the opposite of this means you're a dumb single robot forever yeah it's mm -hmm. true so here let's let him finish this out here which kind of leads us into the fifth difference, which is sin and salvation. So Christians believe that we are born into sin. Because of the original sin of Adam and Eve, everybody is born into sin. Now, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, what happens is we are now completely forgiven if we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Okay, cool. We are saved by grace through faith. Mormons believe okay. that people sin by disobeying God, which this is amazing. There's a similarity right there. However, okay. Mormons believe is this really that the first Jesus one he's going to highlight <laughs> is for everybody's immortality. There are okay, wait, hold on. Which, this is amazing. There's a similarity right there. However, Mormons believe that Jesus's atonement is for everybody's immortality. Yeah, kind of like the Bible says, right? I mean, well, let's just let him keep going. It's late. Let's yep. There are different levels of immortality that people will fall into based on what they do in this life, which also known as judgment. Okay. Finally leads us into the sixth and craziest difference, in my opinion, is what happens after we die. So Christians believe that there's two realities. You either okay. go to heaven or you go to hell. You spend eternity in one place or you spend eternity in the other. Mormons believe in three levels of the afterlife. I as love, did the Apostle Paul. I, I love yeah. how this is so much more complicated. Yeah. Like, he's like, there are only two. Mormons think there are three. <laughs> like, what? 
Okay, let him continue. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> You're right. That is kind of funny. It's like it's not like we came up with 17 or something. And and the other weird thing is, do you know how many evangelicals I've talked to that when you say, "Well, yeah, that's pretty consistent with what the apostle Paul said in the book of Corinthians." You're like, "What are you talking about?" And then you'll open it up and they'll say, "What?" And they were never taught this. Mm-hmm. They had no idea that the Apostle Paul said, you know, the three degrees of glory, one like the moon, one like the sun, one like the stars. And they say, by the way, it doesn't stop there. He also said he knew a man that was taken up into the third heaven. Yep. And if he mentioned a third heaven, there has to have been a first and a second. And guess what? None of the coin Greek gets you out of this. By the way, you studied that coin Greek because you believe the translation of the Bible matters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's like. No. Yeah, it's just like they never know this stuff, but let him keep going. We're almost done here. Yeah. The first level is if you follow all the LDS teachings, what happens is you actually get to become a God yourself and you actually get to have spirit children and essentially rule over a planet like this. Once again, I don't know why they try and make this some kind of like science fiction novel. Yeah. The natural essence of progression, if you are a God, is that you would have offspring like God the Father did. He had Adam, he had Eve, he had uh, Seth, he had uh, Noah, he, he had his his family, the children of God. You know what I'm saying? Like he had his firstborn son, Jesus Christ. Like the natural essence, if you do believe in, you know, not becoming just a, a slave robot in the afterlife that's condemned to just singing his praises, okay, that if you believe in the natural progression as taught in the Bible in the Book of Mormon, inherently there would be some things that come along with it now i don't know why he says like a planet like I, well i mean god created all of the planets so i guess you could say that god has a planet Earth, uh, honestly you know what this but- reminds this is the religious version of when you're hanging out with your buddies and you're the only one who suggests what to do and the, the other guy like you're the buddies like i don't want to do that okay what do you think oh mm-hmm. no <laughs> like i'm sorry we have an exhaustive description of what heavens and the afterlife is like and they don't so they literally just throw darts at us. He's like, they got nothing. They got nothing. He's like, it's so simple. You either go to heaven, the good one, or hell, the bad one. Can you tell me about heaven? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yours is too complex for me like, because you have funny. any level of explanation. Okay, let's, he's going to take it home in the last 60 seconds. Let's yeah. see if, if he can do it and if we can do it. Mm-hmm. So Mormons believe that one day if they're faithful to their teachings, then they're actually going to rule a planet of their own with their own children and offspring. And it's kind of like a repetitive cycle. The mid tier people are those that live righteous lives, but we're not Mormons, which I don't know really know what that means. But what happens? In a book that's constantly referencing the Jews and the Gentiles <laughs> and the difference between the people of God, dare I say, the chosen people of God and the not chosen people of God, he's acting like this is new. I, okay, it's, it's beyond me. I guess he didn't take the sixth class at his University of Phoenix Divinity School. What happens with them is they actually get to live forever and eternity, but they don't get all the perks of those that followed the LDS teachings. And then the third level is those that didn't live good lives, that didn't live righteously, that didn't follow the LDS teachings. And they are on the bottom of the bottom, but it's not hell. They live in eternity and they don't get to have all the perks and goodness, but they don't go to hell. It's not eternal punishment. So, Well, by the way, this is what Jesus Christ said to one of the robbers on the cross next to him when one of them was mocking them and saying if thou art god you know come down from the cross or whatever the other one said hey hold on a second i you know i recognize who you are you're the son of god and he said i what did he say today Today you will be with me in paradise today you will be with me in paradise and there's even references to him saying like if you knew the what even the lowest part of heaven were like right now you'd want to be there in an instant in my father's house house there are many mansions no, Quaker, there are only two. Wait, wait. And they wait, all have one floor. Does this guy really <laughs> think it's better that most people suffer forever? Like Hindus, hell. Buddhists, hell. Confucius, hell. Sikhs, especially. Pagans, hell. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mother Teresa. Guatemalans hell. up until yesterday, and, and hell. He's like sitting every- here <laughs> pretending like Mormons are like, oh, everyone who doesn't follow the secret Mormon teachings end up in these other places. When, like you're saying, Quaker, He's literally condemning everyone else outside of his and, small and denomination way, to it's hell. It's not LDS teachings. It's those who followed the covenant. The gospel and, of and, Jesus Christ. And today, the covenant is taught 
in the LDS church because it's the restored gospel with the line of prophets that's been there since Adam. It's not like nobody got to heaven until Joe Smith went, Ba-dang! like it's not what happened. This has been established. And also, if you read the Book of Mormon, we know that God had a plan to bring the covenant to other lands many, many other countries and peoples. It's almost like his plan was exhaustive and he really thought it out because he's God. And, and he wanted to save as many of his children as possible. Yeah, it was that one German dude. Yeah. It's that a- one German guy who knocked on the Catholic door. That's the dude who got this started. It ain't no heaven without him with his little monk haircut. It's almost as if the omnipotent, all-knowing, and omniscient God, who is the Alpha and Omega, knew what he was doing. It's almost as though he saw the beginning and the end and operated accordingly. How- I, I'm going to get canceled. How is this guy's beliefs not satanic? I'm sorry. I'm just going to say this is satanic. This is you're going to die and become nothing. Everybody goes to hell. The plan should the, the, the plan of God is vague and not clear. And the scriptures don't question them. Just read it. Never look into the historicity. I mean, this is literally I, I know and we you get in trouble are, for saying this. You are supposed satanic. to worship. You're supposed to worship with no progress ever. That sounds yeah. exactly like a religion that was preached by the state. Like, no, Bend that, the knee and listen to us and that's That's it. why men mm-hmm. went postal in the 90s. Remember when there was all those post men that would like shoot up their jobs and it became a term going postal? Because the monotony of doing the exact same thing for hour after hour, day after day after day for 40 years until you get your pension and can retire literally made men just go crazy. And that's after only working for 10 years for the post office. Do you think in eternity... Of just waking up because the sergeant angel says, oh, it's your turn to sing God's praises before your 15 minute break. You know what I'm saying? I I really hope he thinks about the responses we've given to everything he said here. Mm -hmm. Because no, there's too much to lose because they're paid. And that's the problem with paid (laughs) clergy is they never can speak the way they want to speak. They can never speak for themselves because if they do, they lose their job. And therefore, they become (laughs) shills for corporate church America instead of becoming shills for Christ. How do you think this guy would feel to know that none of us are like paid by our church to know the crap that we do? We all all have jobs outside of it. And and also... (laughs) It's just funny because when you really think about it, all Mormonism is is mainstream Christianity in depth. That's all it is. (laughs) Yep. It we're just actually explaining stuff. Like this guy is gonna tell his congregants that they're not gonna become something. His customers. Okay, his customers. They're not gonna become anything. That's right there in the book of Revelation that you can sit on the throne with Jesus as Jesus sits on the throne with God. That says you're going to be on the throne with God. That's what rule. That's what heavenly rulers do. And he's saying you're not going to have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's And that's brutal. sad. Okay. And, and here's the thing. Mm-hmm. He started this off saying, like, here's the differences between us and Christians. Yeah. We've kind of agreed with most of his things that, yeah, we're different in those ways. Yeah. Um, just, and that's good. Yes. That's the point. But I think we've also done a really good job of proving that the way that we believe is actually more biblical than his. You, you're totally right. And more Christ-like. Because yes. what was the big deal? The Sanhedrin was the establishment mm-hmm. that was saying, oh, our creeds are solid. Our academic inquiries into the Torah are are totally solid. And you know what? There's no new scripture here. There's no new anything here. We just need to understand our interpretation. And when Jesus Christ came along and said, no, no, hold on a second. Here's new scripture. And by the way, here's the fulfillment of the old scripture. And now I say, instead of an eye for an eye, turn the other cheek. What is this blasphemy you speak of? You are threatening our power structure. You are threatening our financial gains. You are threatening the status quo. And they wholesale rejected it. And then now Christians, a thousand years later, say, oh yeah, duh, Jesus was right. And And duh, the Sanhedrin was wrong. And then they turn around and act just like the Sanhedrin. Mm -hmm. Who is this Joseph Smith claiming to be a prophet seeing God that that affects our finances, that affects how much we can charge our congregants, that affects the the status quo and the power structure? Be gone, crucify him. I mean, the violence perpetrated by evangelical Christians against Joseph Smith and early Mormons is one of the most shameful parts of American history. They were Protestants back then. They weren't evangelical. Yet. Yeah, just Protestants. Okay. Uh, well. One one thing I want to say though is I just want to reiterate: if you ask your average Christian, not the paid pastors, but your average Christian, what they think God is like, what they think Jesus is like, ask them these questions that this guy just went through. You're gonna find they agree 
with our accurate biblical yeah. interpretation much more easily <laughs> because it's something that actually makes sense. Yeah. When you ask them, do you believe the Bible is the word of God? They'll be like, yeah, I mean, like, as far as it's translated correctly, they won't use those words, but they'll probably land on something like that. Okay. Far more likely than it's inerrant. In San Francisco, I saw a copy of the Queen James Bible. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> it was no, no, it was literally a, like a kind of a gender uh, aff- affirming LGBTQ edit of the Bible. Rock now, I'm going to I don't know this guy. I'm going to assume that's not the Bible he reads. I'm just going to make that assumption. Why not? It's the Bible. Well, I mean, yeah, but that's not the right version. Okay, so then you agree you believe the Bible's true as far as it's translated correctly. Yeah, you know that's this isn't hard. That's your dude. That was a great example. Okay, yep. last fifteen seconds here. Let's see what he has to say. Through all these differences, it's hard for me to think about how a Mormon can be a Christian. I mean, just because they proclaim to be Christians doesn't mean that they are Christians. You could say that about the Christians in Corinth. And the also, very f- okay, I, I just want to tell this guy clearly. From what we've just talked about, we're more Christian than you, but we're not going to gatekeep you on this. You can still call yourself a Christian, even oh. though we're the actual Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Oh, You can still call yourself a Christian because at least you're trying. I get that you're kind of misled in what you're doing, but at least you are trying. You're trying to make videos and trying to figure it out and get to where you want to be. Um, I think you're probably trying to do what you think is right, but I'd invite you to pray and ask God if there is more truth in what we have shared with you today and see what he has to say to you. Listen for God's response. You know, that was beautiful in Christ's life. Also, you can hate me. I'm going to say that. Yeah, <laughs> no, that. you want someone to hate, just hate me. You know what I'm saying? Just like, look, I'll look into Mormonism, but I need to channel my hate from this video. I Make me the guy. You know what I'm saying? Mean me, do whatever you want. I'll take all the hate as long as you pray and get the situated because I don't want you as a robot slave for eternity. Okay. I think there's some better options Let's out there. Let's see how he ends this with that smirk. Let's see if the smirk turns into some beautiful thing. There are requirements, there are regulations, there are standards that people have to meet in order to be considered Pause. a Christian. He sounds like a bureaucrat. Salvation by grace alone. <laughs> there are requirements, <laughs> there are regulations. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> I thought we just needed to say that we'd accepted Jesus. He's the church bureaucrat. Hey, you guys can't do that here. There are standards. There are regulations. There's all kinds and of I get why paperwork he's saying needs this. to be filled out. I get out. why he's saying this. Yeah. But yeah, continue. Let okay, me, so let let's see. It. Let's end it here. Last five seconds. And in my opinion, Mormons just don't meet that criteria. So next time somebody comes up to you and talks to you about Mormonism and how they're Christians, hopefully you have a little bit more in your tool belt to help you in that conversation. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. No. No. <laughs> I'll certainly show you how to create an amazing oh, whoops, ad. Whoops, hold on. Anyone who watches our response video will have a lot more in their tool belt. Uh, you know, so so here, uh, what's what's this guy's name? Spencer Nakamura. Spencer, my man. My man. All right. I see you got your L.A. hat and y- you look like a SoCal kid. I'm sure you live within a couple of hours drive from our studio. Dressed like Quaker. <laughs> yeah, you dress like our boy here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You're welcome to come in and tell us where we go wrong. We don't bite. You know, I'll take you out to a steak dinner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And we can talk about this cheese and you can tell us where we go wrong because unfortunately it just, we've been, you, you got taken to school today and that's hard, but you know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll, we'll talk it out. If you want to talk it out you can bring your scriptures, whatever translation you choose, by the way, <laughs> you know what I said? and uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just see how it goes until then. Yeah. We invite you to ponder on what we said here and anybody else that saw this, reach out to us in the comment section with any kind of questions that you have, any kind of challenges you have, and, and we'll gladly entertain them because the truth is like a lion. He just needs to be set free and he does not need to be protected or controlled. Any other things you want to say before we go? I think you summed it up pretty nicely. Yeah. All right. Okay. This is Midnight Strike Through Mormons. We'll see you guys in the next program. Hey guys, Cardinal is here. I am the creator of Midnight Mormons. And first, I'd like to say thank you for watching this video. We know in an attention economy, there's all kinds of podcasts and shows you could be keeping up with. And you chose to be here with us. That means a lot. Thank you. 
If you haven't had a chance yet, please consider contributing to the channel through Venmo. If you haven't liked, shared, or subscribed yet, please do all of the above. And three, uh, right now we're actually taking sponsors for the program. If you have a product or you have a company that you would like to publicize, please reach out via the website and we will have that conversation. Again, we know there's all kinds of programs out there that you could be listening to or you could be watching, but you chose to be here with us. For that, we are grateful. And we look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.